What's up, Internet? It's your soul, and I've been away a little while here, very busy doing uh, work on projects away from public uh, scrutiny. I've been making music and also in the process of starting a business up, which I will be able to tell everyone about a bit more in the near future. So there's been so much happening since I last made a video covering world events. It's been a bit of a challenge for me to even pick a topic, but I've picked this one here that I think really summarizes the nightmarish state of politics and um, some of the world agendas, which in this case happens to involve Donald Trump. But these kinds of things are happening more and more with many other people too. Uh, he just seems to be the kind of personification of the most brash, visible end of all this stuff. So in this interview, which is only a few days old, uh, he effectively states that Saudi Arabia is paying the American government and military for the American troops to be doing their bidding effectively. So he's kind of renting out the American military to Saudi Arabia. Now, you know, people who are Trump fans and so on might say, well, of course they've got to pay, you know, it's, we, we're not going to just, it's not right for the American taxpayer to pay for American soldiers to go and defend another country. In a sense, I can get behind that, and that does make sense. If a country has a lot of money and they want troops to come and protect them, then it makes sense that they pay for it on a certain level. However, that's assuming that it makes sense that one country sends troops to another country to protect them in the first place and what the motives are for doing that. Normally, or historically, let's say, um, usually, as far as I'm aware, at least publicly, according to the, what the soldiers were told, if you think back to World War Two, for example, and World War One, generally speaking, soldiers went to go and risk their lives to protect another country uh, because they were acting to protect ultimately their own country. Uh, and so, for example, Americans coming to fight in World War One and Two, to some extent, were doing so under the idea that they were ultimately acting to protect America and their allies as well. But ultimately, you know, for example, in World War Two, they understood that there was a good chance that if Nazi Germans took over Europe, then they may well then come and attack America and other things like that. So, you know, ultimately they viewed themselves as fighting for their own freedom. However, if the leader of that country politically is going to go around basically renting them out to whoever wants to pay, I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't give, give them to just anyone just because they gave them money, but really that military is not necessarily going to be acting out of integrity or acting, I mean, not they do anyway, but they're not even really going to be able to put up a front of acting out of integrity. It's going to be fairly clear that they're little more than mercenaries for hire with the world's biggest military arsenal. So Trump is literally turning America into a kind of um, weaponized business, which is not in any way, shape or form what the Constitution of America describes America being and is not in any way, shape or form probably what most soldiers who joined the military would um, see them, their role as being. So I'm just going to play this video and then we'll come back to talking a little bit more about that. We're sending more to Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia is paying us for it. You know, we're doing something that nobody's ever done. I said to Saudi Arabia, we have a very good relationship with Saudi Arabia. I said, listen, you're a very rich country. You want more troops? I'm going to send them to you, but you've got to pay us. They're paying us. They've already deposited $1 billion in the bank. We are going to help them but these rich countries have to pay for it. South Korea gave us $500 million. They never gave us any. They gave us $500 million. I said, you got to help us along. We have 32,000 soldiers in South Korea protecting you from North Korea. You've got to pay. And they gave us $500 million. I mean, you saw that. So there you go. Now, like I said, on the one hand, from a mathematical perspective, if we just look at the math, like he's trying to sort of cause you to do there, then it makes sense. Well, of course they should pay. There's nothing wrong with that. But as I said, you have to look at the bigger picture. Think about the, think about the actual big picture of this. Think about how the mafia operates, for example. Think about the protection rackets. Think about the fact that Donald Trump is known to have connections with the actual mafia in America. There is uh, operations with the construction industry and, and no doubt many other angles. And I'm not saying that this choice that he's made is something that the Mafia has told him to do, but the pattern is exactly the same as what the Mafia does behind the scenes, right? 
the CIA is well known. If you read the book, for example, it's a very good book called The CIA as Organized Crime. You can I'll link it under this video. It's free to read online. Um, it details in graphic de depth uh, the operations the CIA has been involved with for decades, basically to cause conflicts behind the scenes and make it look like they had no involvement. Um, they're basically expert at doing that. So you're talking about an organization, in this case, the US government, um, who has this one wing that goes around covertly starting wars and increasing tensions for their own gain, whatever those gains may be, whether it be territory, power, control, oil, money, um, whatever it is. They're, they're expert at doing that. And so you've got them on the one hand doing that, creating problems politically around the world that lead to violence. Now you've got the other part of the military wing being rented out to protect people. So if you think about it, that's like the ultimate protection racket. It just is. There's no other way around it. And if you think back to General um, Smedley Butler, who's often quoted um, when it comes to America and war and that kind of thing, he was a famous general uh, who wrote a pamphlet talking about these kind of subjects. And he said, war is a racket. Basically, I've gone around fighting war um, in Mexico and South America for all these different reasons. But ultimately, I was doing it on behalf of corporate interests. And, you know, I know that now. And he dedicated his life basically to going around teaching people that afterwards. And that's really all that's happening here. It's the same thing. It's the same, um, you know, oligarchic groups trying to profit off the suffering and death of millions of people in any way they can. And in this case, uh, I mean, if we take the example of, he gave two examples there, um, South Korea and Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia, obviously, really, the only reason they're wealthy is because of the oil. I mean, they're, they're trying to diversify now into technology and so on. But originally it was because of oil. Uh, otherwise, they would have pretty much just been a desert. And so, you know, clearly that's the reason why they have money and also the reason why um, countries like America do business with them. So obviously America wants oil. They have, they're supplied by many other places for oil as well. But at the end of the day, they're very interested in doing deals and negotiating and, and having a presence and um, connection with Saudi Arabia. Britain... And America, as far as I know, both sell large amounts of weapons to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a very oppressive regime in many ways. Uh, women have a very uh, low level of respect and dignity and rights and so on. Um, very abusive, I would say very unpleasant place to be, personally, though I've only been there temporarily. But um, the point being, generally speaking, they're not exactly people who see eye to eye with the mentality and way of living of, of Americans, let's say, the average American. Um, and and also they were heavily involved in 9-11 and yet you know that is always removed from any commentary in the mainstream about 9-11. Um, Trump famously kind of said, oh, I'm going to expose 9-11 before he became president and then, oh, actually didn't do anything at all of that nature. So there's obviously a lot of dubiousness going on here. And so Saudi, he's basically saying Saudi Arabia needs American soldiers. Presumably that's to protect them against terrorist organizations and perhaps other countries like Iran. Um, you know, they're all basically on some level fighting each other, pretty much, these countries over there. So, you know, what would... If, you, if you've if you got a huge military might... I mean, America spends over 50% of its tax budget on military, which is more than any other country, by a long way. So they've basically invested in killing. That's what America's mostly invested in, in terms of their finances. You know, some countries are heavily invested in technology more. Some are heavily invested in other areas. They're primarily invested in killing. So if your main business is killing, then in order for you to maintain your power and your wealth, you have to be able to use that ability. There has to be killing taking place and you have to be involved in it or you have to be protecting people from the threat of killing. So if the world moves towards peace, then your primary investment is lost, isn't it? You, unless you repurpose the military to do something else, which would be a very good idea, um, then your main business model falls apart. So that's why one of the main reasons why the CIA is so heavily invested and involved in creating, stirring up tensions, um, false flag attacks, um, supporting terrorism, supporting terrorists, which is well exposed, well known, even in the mainstream. Even the government's own documents have shown its heavy involvement in um, stirring up people to become terrorists, giving them weapons and equipment and training, um, sometimes publicly stated in order to achieve a proxy war um, objective, sometimes covert uh, in order to achieve some other objective, 
But many times this has come out that they're heavily involved in doing that. This isn't a theory, it's proven fact. So you've basically got this wing stirring up tension, another wing profiting from it. And in this case, Trump is basically saying, you know, now no, no one's ever done this before. We're literally going to get paid huge amounts of money for sending our troops to defend countries. He also describes South Korea um, and the threat from North Korea. North Korea basically being a dysfunctional kind of communist style dictatorship, as I understand it. Um, and, you know, America fought in the Korean War. They've long been um, trying another sort of front for them in this imagined fight against communism. That I'm not even going to get into the whole thing about capitalism, communism. It's such a massive subject and it takes hours to go into. But I guess the point I'm making is here. I would just pr like the people who fight in the US military to realize that they're being used in a very evil, manipulative game. And personally, I think that the kind of communist regimes are, I mean, it's well known by people who study secret services that behind the scenes, the KGB, as it was back in the day, and the CIA were basically one organization at the top level. They, they shared a lot of information together. And I think that speaks to the fact that really at the top echelons of these organizations, they're actually run by the same group of people. And it's a false, false polarity. It's a false battle. It's just stage play where people get killed. Uh, in order to manipulate and, and herd the people of the planet into certain ways of thinking and behaviours that are easier to manage. If you, Basically, they're trying to farm humanity. If you want to control billions of people and you're only a group of 200 people, how are you going to do that? Not very easy. But if you can, first of all, create hierarchies so that people um, do as they're told according to an immediate superior, so that could be corporations or military or even religion or something like that now you've only got to control the people at the tops of the hierarchy so that makes things a lot easier number one then all you've got to do is feed programming into the people's minds and make them really believe that what they're seeing is real such that they follow the orders and they think they're doing the right thing so you create this false dichotomy between um, capitalism and communism or whatever it might happen to be uh, one religion against another you create these groups and you stir them up. Uh, maybe you don't create the groups. Maybe the groups are very old, like in the case of religion. But in those cases, you can just stir them up and, and channel them towards each other so they end up fighting each other and get your people who control the hierarchies to deliberately do certain things so that you create these, these conflicts, which you then use to manipulate people's minds, keep them distracted, keep them fighting each other um, in denial, losing their true power of who they really are as divine human beings who are meant to really be working together, or at least could be working together, to make themselves abundant, safe, and prosperous into the future. Instead of that, you use a divide-and-conquer tactic to constantly keep everyone fighting, which allows you and your small group of people to massively stay ahead of everyone else in terms of wealth, access to technology and information, to the point where people actually want these people, and they think it's great that these people have so much power and can do all this stuff because they think that that keeps them safe. In reality these people that they think are keeping them safe, i.e. these oligarchic um, leaders of the world, so-called, are more often than not deliberately manipulating those same people and stealing their power and using it to enrich themselves. It's really the most horrendous and terrible thing that I've seen happen in human history, and it's been going on for a long time, and it's just sad to me how many people still don't accept this is happening, and still will just, they think the sun shines out of Trump's ass. Or anyone like that. I mean, many people were the same with Bush and Blair and Obama. None of them are any better than each other. They're all involved in this to some extent. And they're all playing a role that's designed to make certain people think that they're trustworthy, certain demographics. Which is why you see the shift between certain types of person becoming a leader in America, moving from one to the other. Because they, they basically put a leader in position who um, appeals to a certain subgroup of the population. Um, let's say, you know more um, open-minded people for the case of maybe Obama, um, more conservative thinking for Trump and Bush and so on. But ultimately they switch between them so that enough people think that their own perspectives are going to get some power built behind them and actually get some sway in society when their chosen person becomes the leader. They think, oh great, now I'm finally going to get heard. And then, oh well it didn't work out so well. Actually it turns out that this leader wasn't really the best. But now we've got an election and we'll try again. And then the other side gets in. And so there's always just, it's carefully managed basically, so that just enough support maintains for the process of government so that this can continue indefinitely. 
they don't let it get so bad that everyone's had enough and no one will support the idea of this fake democracy anymore. That's how I see it. And if, if you look at the work of Carol Quigley, the Ivy League historian from the 1960s, who had access to um, records from the actual network involved who run this stuff, the secret society involved, he, just, he called them the network, um, and he published some of their information, which then got pulled, the book got pulled and no longer was in publication, then eventually got published again. It's called Tragedy and Hope. Um, if you look into that work, you'll see a lot more detail about how this works. The people involved, names, dates, you name it. Um, this isn't a theory, as far as I'm concerned. It's obvious when you put the pieces together and you and you look at the evidence. You take time. You, you know, you might have to take a month off of work to do this stuff. I have done. I've taken a lot of time to study this stuff. It's not something you can just pick up from the mainstream or a piece of information here or there. You know, people who ridicule me and people like me for saying this this kind of thing I, or basically never have looked into the kind of information I'm talking about. It's quite sad and, and distressing in a way that these people think that they're right and even get abusive, which is a sure sign they're not right, um, when this kind of information is presented to them, and yet they've never bothered to take any time to even look into the evidence. It's, it's Actually, I find it disgusting, to be honest, but you know that's the state of, of humanity's consciousness at the, at the moment. Where the majority of people are heavily oppressed psychologically and spiritually, and they don't know that, and part of the oppression um, tells them that actually they're doing great and they're the greatest people on the planet. So ego bluffing, ego fluffing designed to create blind spots so that the people don't know the truth and uh, continue fighting and killing each other and arguing with each other. So, yeah, I haven't been online for a while. You can tell some of this stuff's been boiling up inside of me with all the stuff that's been going on. Um, I haven't even touched on the fires in Australia and um, the stuff with Epstein and it just goes on and on and on. But I'm going to try and find some time to make some more videos in the coming days. Um, and uh, so, yeah, if you've got any comments on this, please leave them beneath. And uh, do pass this on to anybody if you like while well, I've got to stay here. And uh, as always, everyone's invited to Eureka.org, my social network, where there's a ton of more information of this nature. It's really a library of information at this point. Um, it's also a social network, so you can meet other people and discuss and leave comments on this sort of uh, content. And post your own as well, and just grow something useful for the planet, rather than constantly feeding the Facebook machine of profit and exploitation. So yeah, as, as always, thanks for listening and uh, until next time, peace.